Hi girlies, welcome back to my channel. It's been a bit of time since I got these two lovely quota bags this year. So if you recall, I got my Birkin 25 in January of this year and I got my Kelly 25 in June of this year. So I did want to give a quick update on the wear and tear of these bags, how they compare against each other, the pros and cons of both of them, how I've been accessorizing and how I've been styling these bags. Okay, let's jump right into the comparison part of the video. But before we do, hi, I'm Simi D Shop. I make videos once a week on luxury and fashion. I love taking you guys around SF with me sharing all the purchases I make along the way. So if you love all things luxury and fashion, I would love it if you subscribe so you do not miss out. So here are my two lovely, lovely bags. This is a Birkin 25 in Togo Leather Noir with gold hardware. And over here is my Kelly 25 in Epsom Cray Leather with palladium hardware. So they're pretty much polar opposites of each other and I absolutely love that. I also think that the two styles of bag that I'm showing you here are probably the most common for the Birkin 25 and the Kelly 25. I think a lot of people prefer the Birkin 25 and the Retiné form with Togo leather and I do believe a lot of people love the Kelly in the Cellier style with Epsom leather. Because these two are kind of like the more popular specs that you might find a Birkin 25 and a Kelly 25, I think there's also a general conception that the Birkin 25 is a little bit more of like a casual bag whereas the Kelly 25 is generally considered a little bit more of like a dressy formal bag which generally I think I have to agree but as I've been wearing these bags and as I've been styling these bags I really come to appreciate how versatile each of these bags are are. Neither of these bags are not formal enough or too formal or not casual enough or too casual. I think both of them really serve their purpose and I've been having so much fun mixing and matching these two bags with a lot of different types of outfits and so actually the first thing that I want to talk about is kind of how I've been styling these bags because obviously the point of a bag is to wear it out, it's to style them and while I love dressing up in long dresses and flowing skirts and just looking super feminine, I have also really been loving like the casual luxury look. What I mean by that is dressing your clothes, it doesn't have to be like stuffy or overdone or too dressed up. I've been really enjoying just wearing something casual or something super simple but having just a point of luxury and typically for girls I feel like the point of luxury might be like an accessory like jewelry or something or for in this case it's usually my Hermes bags. Generally I think that I've really been trying to embrace just having these bags as like being a part of everyday life so not feeling pressured to dress a certain way because I'm carrying one of these bags which definitely when I first got these bags and I first started shopping at Hermes I was kind of scared almost to take these bags out. I was like, okay, these are, you know, some of my most expensive bags that I own. I should dress the part. I should dress this way. I should look this way. But these days I've just been having a lot of fun experimenting, trying on different looks. And definitely the thing that I enjoy the most is just being super carefree about how I dress myself, but still being able to enjoy these lovely bags. I want to talk about the Kelly first actually, because I do believe like the rigid structure of a Cellier Kelly can be a little bit hard to break out sometimes. So I do want to share a couple of looks that I've been and really enjoying wearing with my Kelly, both elegant and kind of upscale, but also super casual. And I hope that you can draw a little bit of inspiration from the looks I'm about to share with you. I'm very thankful as well that my Kelly is kind of like an off-white color because it makes it super easy to incorporate into any kind of look that I want. I have particularly enjoyed pairing my Kelly 25 with some looks sent over by the brand Fabrique, which is the sponsor of today's video. Fabrique is a designer collective that works with over 300 individual designers to produce collections that are both distinct and creative in order to produce pieces that are fashionable, ethical, and affordable. The designers that Fabric work with are also not just anybody. They have an extremely strong portfolio of decorated designers that have awards that have been worn by Obama or Gwyneth Paltrow or have worked with brands like Oscar de la Renta or Louis Vuitton. These are people who actually have a background and a passion for fashion and Fabrique is providing the platform in which these designers can share their pieces to the general public. Honestly, Fabrique kind of reminds me of Aritzia because it is an online platform in which you can browse different designer, but it gives a much more personalized feel because for each piece that you select, you can actually see and read the bio of the designer that was behind that piece, what their inspiration was. This gorgeous top I'm wearing now is one of my favorite pieces from Fabrique. It was made by a UK-based designer named James Holman, and he has worked with so many different brands, including Versace, Kenzo, Louis Vuitton. The list goes on, and his collection was absolutely stunning, and I knew I had to get one of these. This top is so summery, so boho chic, and the color is absolutely to die for. I love anything pastel. It's especially a pastel yellow. The lightness of the yellow just really makes my skin glow and going even deeper than the color. As soon as I tried this piece on, I was blown away 
by the attention to detail that has been included in this piece. First, I want to draw attention to these gorgeous little floral design patterning all across the blouse. It just really, again, adds to kind of like that boho summer look. And the fabric in itself is really stretchy and thick though. So it's providing a lot of support while keeping it very breezy and flexible. The ties on the side are also really high quality and it allows you to cinch the top upwards so you can kind of create a cropped look if you'd like. And it also creates this lovely ruching on the side. So it kind of snatches in your waist and defines your figure. And then of course, I think that my favorite part of this top is the off shoulder look. I think anything off shoulder is so elegant. You're allowed to show the tops of your shoulders, your collarbone, and it creates just a really elegant and feminine feel. Of course, this gorgeous pastel yellow looks so good with my Kelly 25 in Cray. And honestly, this top has proved so versatile. I'll show you a couple of different looks that I created with this top, but it ranged from really formal to super casual. I could pair with jeans, I could pair with a skirt, and it looked so gorgeous in each of those looks. And so definitely if I had to pick a favorite piece from fabric that I own, it would have to be this one. Now, the look that I want to share with you guys is definitely a little bit out of my comfort zone, but I thought it was so fun, and it ties again into a recent purchase I made at Hermes as well. I got a top and bottom. They're not sold as a set, but they are part of the same collection, and they're from a Amsterdam-based designer named Rebecca Bach. She was considered as like the 2023 denim designer of the year, and they are this gorgeous denim bustier with a zip backing detail as well as a really beautiful pair of high-waisted denim jeans. Because these two pieces are from the same collection, they feature similar colors and patterns and this kind of like patchwork design that I am absolutely loving. But as you guys know, denim is so hot this year. Denim bags, denim clothes, like the denim trend is going strong and it's not looking like it's going to end necessarily anytime soon. So while I was a little bit opposed to it at first, I'm like fully embracing it now. So looking at the top, this design is so gorgeous. It is so beautifully fitted and the contrasting colors of the darker denim with the lighter denim really give a lot of texture and personality to this piece. And the back also so lovely, even a darker shade of denim and it has a zip detail so it's really easy to put on and take off. These jeans here again are so unique and something that's really special about Fabric is also they have a lot of designers that focus heavily on denim. So one of their collectors also is named Adriana Goldschmied and he is known as kind of like the godfather of denim. So a lot of designers I think probably look up to him and so they have a lot of collections based around denim as well. So if you're into denim, Fabric is 100% the place to shop for you. And something that is unique and I've never seen before on a different pair of jeans is this extra little pop-up bit. So you can see that the waistline is here, but it does feature a bit of extra fabric right around the button area here. And again, just really creates a little bit more personality to the jeans. These jeans are definitely unique. They stand out as their own and they are definitely a statement on their own as well. I paired these two pieces with my Birkin 25. Again, I love the play on like a really luxurious bag with a super casual and kind of street look outfit. And I also paired it with my brand new denim Oasis sandals because again, I'm really trying to embrace this denim hype. The next look that I paired with my Kelly 25 is by a New York based designer named Matthew Dolan. And he's worked with Fenty, he's dressed Rihanna, he's shown at New York Fashion Week. Again, a really decorated designer. And it is the Giada striped shirt and short set. It features a really lightweight oversized shirt as well as a matching short that really hugs in all the right places. Starting with the shorts, they are the perfect high-waisted length so they fit right at the smallest part of my hips. They feature this cute little button design and the elastic is really comfortable while providing support but not being overly restrictive. They have pockets which are super important during the summer vacation months when you're just out on a stroll on the beach and you need to just quickly grab a couple things. The shirt also again has so much attention to detail. I first want to draw attention to the tags that all the fabric clothing pieces come from so you can see that it actually shows the designer. If it's limited and I think that this is really nice because it really pays homage to the individual designer themselves. Fabric is just providing the platform for these designers to come together but these pieces are made by individual people so it's really great that they are getting credit for that. Other features to note about this gorgeous shirt is the texture. It is like a silky cotton. It feels so smooth on my skin. It also has side slits along the sides of the shirt so it provides a little bit of extra ventilation. It also makes it easier if you kind of want to tuck one side of the shirt into your shorts. This is the kind of outfit that I want to wear on vacation. It is so cooling, casual, but paired with my Kelly 25, 
you cannot find a more chic outfit than that. The next piece I want to share is by a Shanghai-based designer named Steven Wu. He's also worked with so many different people, Oscar de la Renta, Coach, and he's also dressed some very famous Asian individuals like Espa and Jay Chow. This piece is so soft yet fitted. It is perfect for fall with its fuzzy texture and long bell sleeves. It has a gorgeous deep V neckline, so it's perfect for displaying a pendant as well as a folded over collar. And one of my favorite parts are these hand-sewn pearl buttons. They are so gorgeous and really tie the look together. I really love the silhouette of this piece. It hugs me in the waist, but it continues this really elegant silhouette through its long sleeves and also fringe detailing at the edges here. And because this is white, I kind of preferentially carry my Kelly 25 with it, but it's definitely a piece that I would love to wear out with my Birkin as well. Next up is this gorgeous dark brown dress. This is actually by a soul-based designer named Yudin Choi. And again, what I was talking about where you kind of get a little bit more of a personal connection when you're shopping on Fabrique is because you can see where these designers are coming from and what they've done previously in their work. So honestly, a big reason why I chose this dress was not only for the beautiful silhouette it has, but also because it was made by a Korean-based designer. And I do want to support those individuals as a Korean myself. And it makes me really happy to see that there are so many ethnicities featured in Fabrique's collection. I love this dress because it can really be dressed up or dressed down. It's made of a really lightweight and cooling fabric. I believe it's called a tensile, so it's a little bit moisture wicking and it's super flexible. It has beautiful ruching all down the bodice and then it kind of flares out a little bit so you can kind of think of it as like an a-line with a subtle flare the last thing i want to point out are these lovely off-shoulder straps you know that i'm a sucker for anything off-shoulder but these are particularly unique because they're a little bit of like a twisted sign and they're quite thin so you can kind of position them any which way you want i kind of like the straight look but you can also have them stroop a little bit from the bodice or have them a little bit more elevated totally up to you and it has again that really nice and thick elastic so the straps will stay in place and I chose this because I wanted again to pair it with my Birkin 25 I think that this rich chocolate really pairs well with the darkness of Noir. Noir is also I feel like not like a really really black black kind of in my heart of hearts. It does have a little bit of lightness to it depending on the lighting. And so I really felt like this chocolatey deep brown color suited it so well. And again, I just wanted to highlight as well that while the Birkin kind of is a little bit thought of as a more casual bag, it can definitely be brought to any kind of elegant function. All the links to the pieces that I've shown will be linked down in the description. And if you use my code 2SOMI12, you can get 12% off your purchase. I really hope you go check them out. Now that I've gone over the general ways that I like to style both of these bags, I want to move on to comparing the specs and sizing of these different bags. So let's start with the Birkin first of all. So I have my Birkin unboxing if you'd like to go check that out, I'll link it above. But you can see that the Birkin 25 is a lovely, lovely shape very boxy and rectangular. It can only really be worn top handle because it doesn't come with any additional accessories and so typically the people will just hold it top handle or they might be able to slip their arm through and carry it in the crook of their arm. As you can see, the hardware on the bag is quite limited. It's only available on the turn lock, the end of the singles, and of course these little bars that hold the singles. There's no additional hardware anywhere on this bag. In terms of the Kelly, it has this lovely little trapezoidal shape because I have it in the Cellier style. It holds its structure all throughout, helped by the Epsom leather that it's crafted by and and just like the Birkin, the hardware is extremely minimal. You only see on the turn lock, the end of the singles, and then also here where you do clip the strap on. When we compare the bags directly together, there are some major differences. The first thing that I do want to talk about is size. So these are both 25 sizes, which means that from the bottom, from tip to tip, it should measure 25 centimeters. Thankfully, both of these bags are pretty much 25 centimeters. I did measure them, but because these are handmade bags, I have heard the instance where they might be like a centimeter-ish off. And so I am glad that both of these, like in terms of like the bottom capacity, they are the same at 25 centimeters. However, the major difference in terms of size comes from the width of the bags and also the way that the bags are carried. So what I'm talking about is, you can see that the Birkin 25 has a lot more width than the Kelly 25. And in terms of what I was saying and how you carry the bags, the Birkin 25 is often left open. So what that means is that there is more give and flexibility and the top portion of the bag where you can fit more things, whereas the Kelly is often held closed. So you can see that the bag continually becomes more narrow as it reaches the top of the bag. So in terms of general capacity, the Birkin can fit much more. The size capacity for each bag is also further exemplified by just looking at the inserts that I have in each bag. So these inserts are in my bags at all times. And for my Birkins, I only get my inserts from seven 
have an RP because the Birkins are a softer material, they're made of toga leather typically, and so they tend to lose their structure and they get a little bit slouchier over time. So for me it was really important to get like a really thick and structured insert to put inside my Birkins. However, my Kelly is a Salier style and so I thought it was okay to just get a pretty simple insert. The bottom here is pretty sturdy but the sides are a little bit more of a silky and flexible material and I just got this one off Amazon. I got this one initially because I didn't have time to get a 7RP insert for my Kelly when I got it at the time because I was like quickly traveling and I wanted to take it traveling with me. 7RP inserts are quite expensive and they do take a bit of time to ship so I'm kind of on the fence if I do want to get a 7RP insert for my Kelly down the line but I'm still thinking about it. But regardless, going back to the insert side, Sizes, you can see that there is a lot more width again for the Birkin insert and there's also more height and then I think the largest difference you can see is just like the opening of the bag is much larger on the Birkin 25 insert than the Kelly 25 insert. Another thing that you want to take into account when thinking about size capacity is also the flexibility of the bag so the Birkin 25 at least mine is made of togo leather so it's very flexible and I found that I can really stuff the bag of course it's not great to like really really stuff it but I've on several occasions really filled it up to the brim especially when I was traveling and in terms of my Cali like that's just not possible there is pretty much no give on the Epsom leather and then also having to close the bag so you don't damage the bag any further just really limits the amount of things so literally whatever I can fit inside this insert is what I can fit inside my Cali however I can fill this up past like the top of this insert when I put it into my Birkin. Moving on to other structural differences between the two bags. I first want to point out the handle drops between the two bags. I think this is probably one of the biggest talking points when comparing a Kelly 25 versus a Birkin 25 and even comparing a Birkin 25 with a Birkin 30 is that the Birkin 25 handle drop is quite small. I think proportional to the bag it looks really cute, it looks really dainty but I have often heard that people find it difficult to fit their whole arm through like all the way to their elbow so they can hold this bag in the crook of their arm and that's simply just because there's very little space in between these two handles. If you you have like pretty thin arms like I do you can actually go to the crookier arm so I'm actually very thankful that this is possible because it does make holding the bag especially the Birkin 25 easier and this is one of the main reasons why I actually really prefer the 25 size because I don't have to deal with that con personally but definitely this is not applicable to everybody so this handle drop is definitely something that you should take into consideration when you're thinking about your next quota bag. When you compare the two handles to the Kelly 25 you can see that there is not only more width to this singular handle but there's also a lot more height to the handle drop so it is more than easy to get your entire like arm <laughs> through the Cali bag and this also makes it particularly useful in the colder weather so I live in San Francisco so oftentimes I'm wearing like a chunky sweater or I'm wearing like a full-on parka and so having this extra clearance is super helpful when the weather gets colder and you need to layer up Personally, it's going to be really difficult if it's not during the summer months to get like my arm through this And so oftentimes I do find myself holding my Birkin like as a physical top handle and kind of swinging by my side Whereas my Kelly is like always on the crook of my arm And then the last major difference between these two bags probably has to be the fact that the Kelly comes with its own shoulder strap I'm not gonna put the strap on right now just because I find it a little annoying to take the strap on and off So typically when I carry my Kelly out, I never wear my shoulder strap with it But I know that the fact that it does have the option to put a shoulder strap on is a big game changer for a lot of people because you know mothers who have kids or just generally people who need to be more hands-free will definitely appreciate the option of being able to sling your bag over your shoulder. Moving on to another difference between these two bags is price. So this year I got both of these bags so I can comment on the 2024 price for each of these bags. So I bought my Birkin for $11,400 and my Kelly Sally A was $11,800. So these are obviously very expensive bags. The reason why the Kelly 25 is more expensive than my Birkin 25 is because generally Cellier bags are more expensive than Retin-A bags so I don't know if it's necessarily like the leather or just the process of making Cellier bag that makes it more expensive but generally like the Epsom or whatever Cellier version of a bag will be more expensive than the Retin-A Togo version of the bag. This year also there was a hefty increase across all quota bags so it's pretty funny because my Birkin 30 that I bought last year was actually $11,600 so my Birkin 30 which is like a huge bag was cheaper than my Kelly 25 so I have like 11,400 was my Birkin 25, my Birkin 30 was 11,600, and my Kelly 25 was 11,800. So overall, the Birkin 25 is $400 cheaper than the Kelly 25, but I generally feel like if you're talking about bags this expensive, you shouldn't worry about that necessarily and just pick the bag that really speaks to your heart. Next, I want to talk a little bit about the pros and cons for each bag. So I do want to start with my Birkin, and we will start with the pros because there are a ton of pros to this bag. I have 
really really thoroughly enjoyed using this bag this is like my go-to everyday bag just because it has so much space it's so easy just because of the black coloring it pretty much matches with whatever i want to wear that day and it's just a really comfortable bag to wear so number one pro i think is generally just again the space of this bag i before getting into my hermes journey mainly only had like small bags slash mini bags so i think my largest bag outside of this bag if you don't count like totes was probably my chanel mini and so in my chanel mini i could maybe fit like a compact lipstick lotion and then like my phone car keys and wallet like really couldn't fit that much but the Birkin 25 it can fit anything and more and i mainly use this bag during my travels to korea and tokyo as well and so it was just perfect i could throw my camera in here i could throw my passport in here all my receipts you know or anything else additional i was shopping if it was small i would just slip it into this bag so this bag has definitely been like my catch-all i absolutely love the freedom i can have when actually carrying a bag that fulfills its purpose of being a real handbag additionally i really appreciate the structure of this birkin i love the fact that a lot of people wear their birkins open because it just again it makes it really convenient like this is just an easy bag and so when the bag is continuously being able to be opened but it's still very secure because I'm holding it very close to my body it just makes you know grabbing my phone easy grabbing my car keys or whatever and so I really appreciate the ease of use that the Birkin provides and then the last pro I do want to highlight about the Birkin which I feel like not a lot of people necessarily talk about is the fact that the Birkin I feel like is much more accessorizable than the Kelly is actually so first of all you've got two handles so you can kind of go crazy with your Twilly you can either match the toys or you can mix and match it allows just a little bit more personality to shine through the bags additionally I've seen a lot of people hang charms from these little single holders of course Rodeos have to go on as well but I'll talk a little bit about the Cali like this is like the perfect little canvas for displaying bags because there's no like opening and closing a flap like the way that you see the Birkin the way that I carry the Birkin is how I use the Birkin so anything that's being displayed or accessorized on the front of my Birkin it's not necessarily like disturbed in the process of me using it so I've seen a lot of people be really creative in the way they decorate their Birkins and I think it's just a really unique way to kind of express yourself when you're going out in terms of cons for this bag I can be like 100% honest and tell you that I really have no cons about this bag I think the only con that I particularly hear come up multiple times is the handle drop but again and like I said, it's personally not a problem for me, which I feel very lucky that it's not a problem. But because that isn't an issue, I I honestly have nothing to really nitpick about the bag. I guess the only one thing I will say is that because Togo is a soft leather, I just get a little bit more concerned about it. I'm glad that my bag is in noir, which is black, obviously. So in case anything happened to it, really, it would be a lot less noticeable than if it was a bag that was in a lighter color. But generally, because the Togo leather is softer, I am just a little bit more careful or I, I feel like I try to baby this bag just a little bit more Typically, I'm like pretty casual when I use this bag, but if I'm in a really crowded place, like for example in Tokyo, Ginza was so crowded. I was like constantly bumping into people as I was shopping. And so I just get a little bit nervous sometimes just because like you can feel the leather. It feels so soft. It feels so luxurious. But at the same time, I feel like it's equally easy to be damaged. So you just have to keep that in mind. If you're a little bit of a clumsy person, you know, Togo might not always be the best leather for you. Starting off with the pros for my Kali, I think it definitely has to be the leather and structure of this bag. Epsom is just very durable. You can hear I'm scratching my fingernails across the surface. I have no worry that it's going to leave any kind of mark. And additionally, the Cellier style is just a very, you know, hard and structured style. So when I'm carrying this out, like I was mentioning, I'm a little nervous when I carry my Birkin out in public or into really crowded places. I'm never worried about carrying my Kelly 25 into crowds just because I know how durable and resistant this bag is. And of course, another pro, like I mentioned, is the large handle drop. It is super Super easy to get your arm in there regardless of what you're wearing it's super comfortable on the crook of your arm so it's great that you can wear this bag in your hand on the crook of your arm and over your shoulder moving on to cons of the Kelly 25 there are definitely more cons for this bag than the Birkin 25 and the first thing that comes to mind is actually the lack of ease of use that I feel when using this bag sometimes so what I mean by that is that when I was talking about my Birkin the Birkin is like always open for me it's in a really relaxed state it's very comfortable to use I can like put my hand in take it out and nothing really has to change about like the exterior of the bag in terms of the Kelly it does 
kind of need to be held closed at all times. So you can hold the bag open like this if you have a cellier style bag. So the Epsom leather is stiff enough where you can hold it like this. So you can kind of like open it and get it in without having to necessarily put the turn lock inside of this little square. But that actually I think is not super recommended because I did that for a little bit of time in Tokyo. And I feel like there was starting to be a little bit of creasing in this back area, especially when there's like a lot of things. There's just going to be a strain at this pressure point right here. So I actually wouldn't really recommend having your bag open and carrying it open all the time just because you want to protect the back of the bag. So what that means as a user of this bag is that you're constantly like moving this flap around and you're constantly closing and opening the bag, constantly pushing this turn lock through the square and taking it off. And honestly, it's not like a super easy thing to do either. It takes a little bit of like force to open and close the bag. And additionally, even once the bag is open, the Epsom is so stiff that like you can barely kind of push this part upwards or even pull this out. So it takes like a decent amount of strength even to get inside your bag. I think the bag will soften a little bit over time. This is still a very new bag to me, but right now like it is hard to really move any portions of the Epsom leather. And so when I was using it in Tokyo, while it was so gorgeous and so pretty, it was honestly kind of discouraging to take it out at times just because like my hands feel sweaty in Tokyo. Like I was just like so hot. And so constantly having to like touch my bag and like finagle it and like put my hand inside and scrape up all against like the size of the bag wasn't like a super pleasant feeling for me and so oftentimes I opted to use my Birkin instead just because of those circumstances. The second con I would have to say for the Kelly 25 is actually the size. So while I still think it's enough size to get you through your day, like it's more of like an errands bag or like a quick going out bag instead of like an all day bag where I feel like the Birkin is definitely more of like an all day bag. This can probably fit the same amount of things as like a Chanel mini or maybe just like a little bit more than a Chanel mini. Like I showed you, the insert is actually like pretty narrow and not that big. And so in terms of travel, this is not an ideal travel bag because you really can't fit that much. But definitely if you're going out with friends or going for a night out, like this is the perfect bag for that. And then the last con I wanna mention ties into the last pro that I mentioned for the Birkin. And that is in terms of how you can accessorize the Kelly 25. So recently I've been very obsessed with accessorizing all of my bags. I've been buying tons of charms from both designer houses and just like on the streets of Japan and Korea and I love just like hanging things off you know dangling things using different twillies that's something that I personally enjoy for all my bags but for the Kelly 25 unfortunately it's a little bit more difficult not only because there's like less hardware to kind of hang things on but even when you do end up hanging something on the bag so for example I've just put my mom Sylvester Pegasus on it it gets a little bit annoying when you're using the bag so for example just like when you're kind of opening and closing your bag it kind of just like gets in the way because it also has to like lift with the flap of the bag whereas the Birkin like I was mentioning like I can get in and out of the bag without having to touch any part of the front of the bag so all the accessories that I put on the front will just remain there in like their own peaceful setting but unfortunately for my Kelly regardless of what I put up here it's gonna kind of like lift and get jostled out of place and there's not really any place I can put accessories down here that will stay and so honestly for me like I don't really accessorize my Kelly 25 other than my Twilly and that's just because yeah the accessories just get a little bit annoying. So that pretty much wraps up my comparison of these two gorgeous bags and in terms of wear and tear for both of them I can honestly say that I've had literally no wear and tear on either of these bags. I mean there's no scratches to the hardware. I've even taken off the stickers from a Kelly 25 yet just because I want to like preserve the clarity of it but even on my Birkin 25 which I've already taken off my stickers I can't even really see hairline scratches on any of the hardware there's no color transfer there's no scratches on the leather the bottoms look perfect and I am not babying these bags at all I'm still being mindful when I'm carrying these bags out I'm not rubbing them up against anything I'm not like placing them down on a dirty table I'm taking like these basic precautions when I'm carrying my bags and I take these precautions with any bags not just my Hermes bags but I'm still thoroughly enjoying my bags and the way that I'm really thoroughly enjoying my bags is honestly just being me like I'm wearing whatever type of clothing I want paired with whichever bag I want it doesn't have to be a fancy outfit because I'm carrying a fancy bag I've like thoroughly embraced wearing denim with my Birkin that also means that I'm being able to carry my bags out to pretty much wherever I want originally I was a little bit concerned about like oh this bag is a little too fancy for this location or people might judge me if I carry this bag to this occasion and these days like 
I honestly just don't really care. Like, if I want to go to the farmer's market with my Birkin, I'm going to go to the farmer's market with my Birkin because I obviously invested a lot of money into these bags. I absolutely love these bags, so I want to wear them as much as possible. And again, your fashion should be dictated by you. It shouldn't be dictated by the people around you. So you should wear whatever you want. You should go wherever you want carrying these bags as long as you're being mindful and as long as you're being safe. So that's pretty much all for today's video. If I had to choose a favorite bag between the two, that is honestly so hard and while I do think that the Cali 25 is like the most feminine, elegant, gorgeous bag for an elegant evening or a night out, if I had to only pick one, I would have to pick my Birkin 25 just because personally for me, I, I don't go to anywhere fancy that often. I'm much more of like a casual everyday person and so the Birkin 25, and like I showed you, can easily be dressed up, easily dressed down. I feel like the Birkin 25 honestly is a little bit easier to like kind of walk that spectrum of fancy to casual than the Cali 25 is and again nothing can beat the a space of the Birkin 25 and the ease of use of this bag and so if I had to only pick one I would have to pick my Birkin 25 but I love both bags equally well that brings us to wrap on today's video thank you guys so much for watching and please do not forget to check out Fabric's website all the links of what I showed will be down in the description and if you use my code to so me 12 at checkout you can get 12% off your entire order if you have any questions or comments please leave them down below and I'll definitely see you in the next one Bye guys!